Hello, welcome back to the card review series that I'm doing with Cranberry. Cranberry, say hello. I got a bone to pick with you, Voyix. Oh, yeah? Last last video, you didn't let me say goodbye. Would you like, Cut to, me off. Would you like to say goodbye now? Goodbye. All right, and then I end the hello. video. <laughs> uh, we're continuing our card reviews. We're on, to, uh, we're on to the Sentient, or I guess the Awoken, as it is here. Yeah. The sentience, the hero. Uh, you know, I'll probably mix that up about a hundred times. I'll, I'll say awoken and awaken about a hundred times too. So don't, yeah. don't worry about it. Mm. Uh, so I'm gonna first start us off. I do have one correction I would like to make because since our last video, I've actually had a change of heart on one of the cards we talked about. Uh, mm. One horn tome or whatever. Right? Yeah, one horn's tome actually yep. just hard carried one of my runs yesterday. I saw that, and you know, I, I agree with the correction you want to probably make. I think. If you're in a position where you're close to being able to play it consistently, then it's probably worth picking up. We kind of just ragged on it the whole time. Yeah. I mean, it's... The thing is, applying one multi-strike is really good if it's good for you, if you have Alpha Fiend or Slay on your hero. So, you know, if you can reasonably get it to work, it's going to be good for you. But this video well, like, isn't if you're, like, if you're If you're on, like, floor 7 with only 3 energy, yeah, like, probably, it's probably not going to work. Probably, probably past that, yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know... Anyway, just wanted to throw that one in there before we got started here. You ready to begin? Yes. All right, so starting off, we got the Sentient. Instead of going through like all of the stats and all of that, I'm just, we're just going to talk about the three types, right, and overall how we feel about them. I feel like that's a lot simpler. So yeah. I'll just list the three types, and then we'll go through them. There's the Sentient with the Rejuvenate, 15, 30, 60 damage to the front enemy unit, scaling up health at 25, 50, and 100. Then there's the Revenge one, which always draws one root on Revenge. So every time it gets hit, you draw a card, and it scales up to 200 health from 40. And then there's the Bristling one, which is spikes, 10, 20, 40 spikes with, what was it, 30, 60, 120 health. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about these? Which one do you like? Which one do you not like? Uh, I think that the Sentient is the most consistently good one, because no matter what you do, you're getting the big beefcake. Yeah, but, I agree. But, but like, but... Revenge is weird. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it makes like thematically more sense for like the last revenge version, the, the third tier upgrade to revenge draw two. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. I think the fact I mean, that, that doesn't increase is kind of sad. But yeah. like, you know, two hundred HP is a lot. Two hundred HP is a lot. I think the the revenge one is the best one that you can't take. Like by far, I think that if I was if in, in a perfect world, I would always take all three into revenge. But if you you can't like if you start with revenge on the first one, you can't take the trials. Yeah, definitely, definitely at higher covenants, uh, you just don't have enough early game damage to fight any of the bosses. Yeah, you just die. So for my me personally, I think the spikes one is the best because it's like it's the mix between health and damage. However, I have had success with the rejuvenate one deal 60 I have, damage I have, I have as well and i have a more or less the same opinion spikes is really cool when you think about spikes it's like you know think of it almost like it's a 10 30 unit with yeah. Speed yeah, zero energy right it's kind yeah. of how you go not not every enemy attacks always obviously but uh that's one way to almost kind of look at it when you evaluate yeah and that's that's pretty good stats right there and then you know there's a spike synergies etc etc so yeah, it's, it's cool. I think overall the spikes one is the best, but I, I personally, it depends on your run a little bit. You'll probably you might want to pivot into uh, revenge drawing because the revenge draw is really strong. You end up with t almost nine or ten cards every round, which is really really strong for cycling through the deck fast. But you're gonna take a lot and, of damage on the way there. And honestly, even the rejuvenate's pretty good too. Like you know, yeah. with the with those restores and your starting deck, you know it it dealing quite a bit of burst damage in the beginning is not bad. Not yeah. great for bosses because once you once you you know cast those spells and it's a it's a it's a zero what is it zero twenty five just yeah, zero twenty five doing nothing so I don't know overall I but, think the like, sentient the, 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 I think the sentient is the strongest champion for sure well I don't know I think she's on the on the strength side just because you, she's one of the champions that you'll always have a good choice no matter what because two of her three choices are always going to be good for you the other thing about the sentient that the other uh, or the ace the awoken in general is that when you play the awoken you always have you're guaranteed to always have a tank mm -hmm. right like the sentient is a tank no matter what yeah uh, the hellhorn there's the the wrathful variant which is kind of a tank yeah weird tank. umbra can kind of tank 
um Recta Recta tanks. Can sort of tank if you build around it and harvest or you know if yeah, you or, go burnout yeah. I mean, burnout he's a tank too i guess yeah, burnout like, he's just everything burnout he's perfect yeah. yeah yeah but like with the awoken you're gonna if you're building a strategy that needs a tank you will have a tank because the sentient is one no matter what yeah and which is fun when you evaluate it as well the sentient like she's really good at fighting spikes in the early trials because she does not attack so like she's going to crush spikes and mm -hmm. she's good against armor if you're taking like armor she'll punch through armor like she the I, I, either of them that isn't revenge draw one is going to let you punch through pretty much every single trial she has a high enough health to survive bonus damage if you take spikes you're going to beat the invasion trial without taking any damage Mm -hmm. The Woken's good. Sentient's yeah. good. Anything else? No. All right. Move on to the cards and actually bring it up right. All right. So we got the common cards first. Common Awoken. There's actually less common cards for Awoken than there are Hellhorned. That's interesting. Uh, we'll start with the starting card, of course. Restore. Restore two health. Apply one, one regen, one energy. So in your in your tier list of starting cards, where do you put restore? Restore fights it's with at like A or B tier, I think, right? Yeah, it fights with torch for A or B tier. Restore. I think the big thing about restore is that it's like it's a questionably good starting card. Some some builds you're just like heal two, regen one is like a twenty five damage nuke, or it's like plus four spikes on my boy, or it's plus two plus two on top of everything else, and you're not getting anything better than that in cards. Mm -hmm. So. But also in some builds, it's like, this is worthless, none of my units need this. That is true. Whenever I play Awoken, I tend to try to lean that way. So for me, I'd probably put this at A or S tier in the starting card tier list, just because I really heavily favor getting getting a, a Rejuvenate tank from the Awoken uh, clan. I think I put, it, I put it, 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 it... I put it A tier. I'm pretty sure I have my clan starting card tier list worked out now. Mm -hmm. This is going A tier for sure, and I'm giving Torch B tier, 100%. Okay. Lock in. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Alright, so we'll move on to the cards now. First up, we got zero energy spell, deal five damage to the front enemy unit, draw plus one next turn. It is Sting. You uh, go first, I'm scared. <laughs> Alright. Uh, it's uh, this, is what, this is the card that... I feel like I have a card like this in every single card game I play, where when I first saw this card, I went, why would I ever not take this? This card is so good, and I would take it every time I saw it. And now I never take it, because as like in the lower covenants, 5 damage is like a, a fifth of a frontline unit's health, and in the higher covenants, it's like a ninth, because enemies, especially early on, and it gets worse as you go on. I don't think it's very good, but like if you're building around Sting, it's kind of fun. Um, it, yeah, it's definitely, you know... A uh, low covenant all star. Mm -hmm. um, I think it still has a place at high covenant, but it can't be the way you're beating bosses, right? If your game plan is like I'm gonna play Sting forty times against Seraph, <laughs> no matter what you're doing, unless you maybe like if you're going like spell weakness and you've managed to accumulate a million spell weakness and your big finale <laughs> is to Sting Seraph for eight k damage, then sure. Yeah. But. But, 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 like, it, it, it's not a reliable plan. No, I'm not. Sting, Sting is great at clearing out units, though. Like, if you're if you're in the in the non-boss fights, it's so good. Like, there's relics that it has synergies with that, like, make it make it do big damage for cheap, and it's good. But, like, it can't it can't kill a boss. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like a nice little bonus, right? It's like, oh, yeah, this gives me an extra five damage, and maybe you get, like, a enemies gets knocked down the next health tier you can take like five less damage on your pyre but overall i think that you can typically just replace sting with a better card that fits your deck plan mm -hmm. uh, up next zero energy spell deal three damage move that unit to the front vine grasp you like to take the lead on this one it's better torch yeah i mean sure it's 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 you know you shouldn't necessarily compare it to the other clan cards, obviously, but like it's it's a uh, if it doesn't kill the backline unit, it puts them in a bad spot to be killed. Yeah, it kills pretty much everything up until four seven, like four four seven and eight. You won't be able to kill backline because I think a lot of them spawn with five health, but it's all right. Not it's just it's not necessarily a card that I seek out, but if I start I, with it, I'm I, happy. I agree. It's like you know. You're not super excited, but if your other choices 
in the draft are bad, and it's like, oh, I guess I'll put Vine Grasp in. It yeah, does, it does. It does what's advertised, right? Like, it doesn't do much else. No, it's like, I, I don't know if I've ever actually actively taken this card. It's probably when you take if you're like you finish the first floor and you're playing like I don't know, Awoken Umbra, and you go, wow. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely take this when you don't have torch in your deck. You yeah, don't have torch or like a good way to do targeted damage, then it's good. But like, yeah. if you're yeah, like like st like awoken, awoken Umbra and awoken uh, re a melting remnant, like those two will probably be like I could use a vine grass early, I suppose. Yeah. Other than that, not great. Uh, one thing to also notice is that you can use this on your own units if you ever are in like a, a position where you ascend or descend a unit and need to move them up front. Mm -hmm. But I never have. I've honest. also never done that yet, but like I can see that being you know a good use case. I just I feel like I don't play in a style where I'm like, oh man, I've moved a unit, but now I need to pull them to the front. Typically, I plan around making sure that I don't need to move my unit to the front when they get ascended or descended. Yeah. Uh, up next. One energy spell, restore two health to all friendly units and deal two damage to all enemy units. Glimmer. This is the best card for a damage upgrade. Yeah, ever. oh my god. Give this thing this is the best plus ten magic power card probably in the game. Like yeah. this or like maybe blazing bolts as Umbra. Like the value is insane. It goes from uh, like, oh I trigger a rejuvenation to oh I save your unit and also wipe out the entire enemy backline forever. Yeah, it's 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 pretty just nuts. Yeah, funnily enough, I've never actually had this card in a winning deck. I don't know how. Really? Yeah, I don't know, but it's it's really good. Like it's a really good card. I just I've never had it work out. All of the runs that I have it on, I lose. Maybe it's cursed. Must probably cursed. But like it's a really good card. Damage is like targeted damage for the backline is kind of at a premium in Awoken as well, so this is like damage to everyone or cheap and it's common. And it, and it, and it heals for everyone, mm -hmm. so all your rejuvenates get healed. And it's you know, when you upgrade it, it's 12 AOE. Does anything else even have AOE heal other than the other uh mm -hmm. heal card? No, I think it's just Awoken. this and Awake the Wildwood, right? I guess we'll see because if there is, it's in here. I don't think any other clan even has healing. Well, like remnant has some healing so it doesn't matter whatever we'll get to it later oh yeah you're right you're right uh up next one energy spell enhance a unit with plus eight attack and minus two health it is razor sharp edge it's a weird card yeah it, it it's it's one of the few cards oh it's not often that i have this happen but it's one of the cards in this game where i've gone i i've played it and had it not do what i expected because I've played this on like an enemy that has three health that took two damage and went, if I play Razor Sharp Edge on you, it'll kill you. And it doesn't, because it takes off the max HP. Max HP not that current, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a really good card though. Like you throw this on that multi-strike lady, you give her like plus five, plus ten from a shop, and then you throw her plus eight, and that's big value. Really yeah. loves anything with multi-strike. Agreed. But, uh, go on. You gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. You gotta be careful, right? Like and and you know don't be afraid to put this on a tank. Tanks mm -hmm. do like this as well, right? Yeah. If, you, if your multi strike unit is not in a position where you can lose two HP on it, like if your your one hundred and twenty HP uh, the sentient will you know be like cool. I want eight attack. Sure, that's that's a good trade. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, it's just it's it's one of those cards where it's like typically you're it makes your units benefit from getting health so like your if you have a razor sharp edge and you have animus of will the three times three lady you suddenly go from i just want to make her do as much damage as possible to i can give her health and have her survive spikes and sweep and also still gain a lot of damage from that which is nice all in all i think it's a good card yeah, it's it, it, it for a specific you know yeah type of play style, right? Like, you you need, a, you need a multi strike unit to put it on to really work. If you're trying, if you are just putting this on tanks, it's not a good plan. No, not at all. This is like, but this is like this is part of with a multi strike unit a game winning strategy. I think. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Right, up next, one energy spell: restore ten health to a friendly unit, deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to five times the amount healed. Restoration detonation maybe the weirdest card art in the game yeah it's i don't know what's going on in this card what it boys what is that 
Uh, so that is the Awoken Hollow, not the yeah, Spike. I know, I know what that is. I know, but what, what is that? Uh, that's a, so what it is, is this is a growth being placed on him that then uh, shoots out poisonous spores at the enemy while also healing him because it's a symbiotic growth. Okay. That's All what right. I think anyway. I think it's a butt, but whatever. All right, you know, I guess it could also be a butt. But he's a plant. Um, Why would he need a butt? It's a good card. Yeah, it's good, for sure. Uh, it's uh, The th most important thing to note about it is it does not do damage based on overhealing. So if you heal for 5, it only does 25. It, never, it doesn't always do a max of 50. Yeah, that would that'd be so good. Uh, that card would be nuts. Like, that would be insane. It is important to note as well that, you know, on full HP, Rejuvenate still triggers. So it's yeah. not... It's not a dead play if your tank is is full HP and he has a rejuvenate ability. Yeah, however, if you have one of this card, it does become uh, sometimes the right play to not fully heal your frontline units, which is weird. Yes. It's also like not as good as Glenmore, but also a pretty good target for uh, plus 10 uh, spell power. Yeah, because then it, it does double the potential damage as well. The you problem... Know, one one energy of 100 damage when that works out is pretty cool. Yeah. The big problem that I have with Restoration Detonation is that, like, I don't often take this card because I feel like it's outclassed by almost every other healing card in this game. Like, because it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't do well in a regen setup, and regen is the way that you want to go in on bosses. If you stack up, like, 30 regen, then the boss just can't kill your units, right? Similar to stacking up a ton of lifesteal, and Restoration Detonation doesn't help for that. And then when you're playing it for just the healing, it only is a 10 health heal. Which, as a result, like, the card does kind of fall off. It's still good in the early game for that little extra nuke, 10 damage. Even just getting, like, a 2 heal, 10 damage off of it is solid. But I feel like it does struggle in the mid to late game quite a bit. I agree, but I would say at end game, if you are struggling to kill units, you're going to want it, though. Like, yeah. if, you're, if you're trying to do some sort of spike build, and every every round, you're, you're the, the units are just hitting your spike guy once and then just walking past them, uh, this this will help make sure those units do not walk past them. That's true. Uh, it's not, you... that's not the best solution for that, but it is a possible solution. Yeah, possible solution. It's not bad. I I don't know. I, I'm. It's one of the cards that I'm happy to get in my opening deck, but I also am like, I might want to remove this once I remove everything else. I'll, um, I'll usually keep it still, but... Uh, yeah, it depends on what the deck's looking like, for sure. Yeah, obviously. Up next, one energy, enhance a unit with plus three attack and plus three health, steal enhancer. Oh, there's not a whole lot to say about this card, right? It's just like, fine. Yeah, like, so it's kind of stuck in a weird place, right? If you're mm -hmm. trying to do some sort of multi-strike build, you want Razor Sharp Edge over this every time. Yeah. If you're trying to, if you're trying to buff up a tank to be beefier, uh, you want, you know, the next card probably wildwood sap instead mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so steel enhancer kind of you know it's caught in between yeah it's it's good with razor sharp edge so that way you don't bring your dps too low on hp yeah playing them both is a is a net plus 11 and a net plus one hp i i have used steel enhancer in the same way that we talk about i use fortify where you just throw this and spam it on whoever your backline unit is and keep them alive through one extra round of sweep. I have had it do that pretty well, because ma raising max HP is a pretty prime, like, that's a premium. You don't do that very often. So it's good for that, but I think that this is the sort of card that would benefit from, like, throwing holdover on it or something, because the effect of getting it out only, like, once or twice in the combat is not huge. Play it's every just, turn. Like, yeah, yeah, you want to play, you probably want to play a lot of these over the course of the combat, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, up next, one energy spell, consume, apply, regen 5, wildwood sap. It's a, it's a great card. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's good. Regen is strong. Regen's really strong. Being able to just slap down that 5 regen bad boy, that's nice. There's so many, there's so many good synergies too with mm -hmm. regen as far as relics go. Like, mm -hmm. this can, this, you know, it's a factorial healing, so on its own it heals like what? I don't know, 25 or something? Uh... uh 5, 4, 20? 3, 2, 1, yeah, I think that's 20. Wait, 20? 15, right? Because it's... 15, that, that's it, yeah. It's 15. Play, you know, play the Spire. But, but then when you increase it more, you know, you play another Wildwood Sap, now you're healing a, a million damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and while during waves it might not heal a million, during bosses it more often than not will. 
Yeah, and you can also just like throw it onto one of your hollows and let them just constantly like passively gain at least one stack of their benefit every turn. Even if you can't focus on them, they're still getting some benefit. For five turns, they're healing and getting like plus two spikes or plus one plus one. It's a good card. Uh, really, one, one a really really good candidate for double stack as well. I was gonna yep. I was gonna say double stack. Yeah. I've I've tried using the uh, remove consume. Uh, upgrade on it as well and it, it two two energies may be too much yeah i think two energy is too much to pay for that because you're not gonna like like the same thing with steel enhancer you might not really play it enough times for the non-consumed benefit to be worth it yeah i've got to tell you that like while we're on the topic i think that i've only ever found one card that i've said removing consume from this is value uh I'll give you a moment I think, I think you're gonna guess i'm gonna guess space prism you are correct it was space prism I have I have a card that I've done that with in this card pool. Ooh, talk about. I'm excited to hear it. But not yeah. Wildwood Sap. I tried it with Sap. It just yeah. doesn't work that well. I don't think it's but like Wildwood Sap's still great. This is like I would take as many of these as I could. And the last thing I want to say is that if you get that event that gives you a random consumable card and you pick Awoken, you have about a 100% chance to get Wildwood Sap. It's not exactly 100%, but like you have, it's most likely that you get a common card, and this is the only common consumable for Awoken. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it comes up all the time for that event. Mm -hmm. Finally, in the common pool, two energy spell, enhance a unit with plus four attack and apply spikes four. Sharpen. It's all right. I don't even like. I wouldn't even say it's all right. Uh, it's 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 not it's not on the level of ritual of battle, but I, I, it's close. I don't <laughs> know. I, I, uh, that spikes four well, is kind I, I of will, value. I will say I will say giving it like a a one cost uh, downgrade. Mm -hmm. Like reducing it two to one is a pretty good trade, but like, so. Eh. But here's how, here's how I look at it, right? In in terms of, in terms of cards that you get in your starting deck from the Covenant one throwing garbage at you, this is the worst card. However, it's not so bad that you have to remove it right away. It's passable. I, I I agree. I wouldn't remove it usually, but I would look at it every time I draw it and say, why are you here? Yeah, like, I think that Sharpen all it really, it shines on, like, your first two floors, especially if you took, like, like, this is something that you can maybe get away with taking revenge on your Sentient with, because then you can throw her the spikes anyway, and she'll still punch through all of the backline in the early game. But for the most part, this card sucks. Like, I don't know if I've ever willingly taken this card. It's just, I think that plus four attack and spikes four is like a it's like a clash right because on the one hand plus yeah, four yeah. attack wants to go on your multi-strike boys on the other hand spikes wants to go on your tanks yeah it, it, this card is confused it doesn't know what it want it doesn't know what it wants to do it's just you know yeah you could call you could call that flexibility but four or two energy for either of these effects when they're useful is not a good deal yeah it's like I almost think the only the only unit I can even no this is like this is a dumb idea too but I was like maybe sharpen is good on a wickless baron that you're putting behind a tank to farm harvest and then he's also getting multi strike from an upgrade but like that's such a niche yeah I'm, it's like it's it's okay right it's it's probably the worst common I would never pick this but it's I don't hate it it's not ritual of battle. I think it might be Ritual of Battle. I don't, I don't think it's. I don't think it's Ritual of Battle. Ritual of Battle costs three energy. Is you're this... right. You're right. My bad. My bad. All right. Ready to move on to Uncommon. Closing thoughts on the common cards for the Awoken. Um. Uh, you know, uh, more more clunkers here than I remember there being. Yeah. Like I, uh, you know. And there's... Especially like Sharpen, Vine Grasp, Sting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of All cards of in this set that do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful, I guess, about your common pool. Yeah. I really I think there's only like two three of these cards that I'm happy to get as my common starting card from Awoken. Well, I I'm, well, I'm always happy for Sap. Mhm. Mm yep, same. I'm often happy early for Restoration Detonation. Okay. And then depending on my build, I I I might be happy for Razor Oh, I I'm always happy for Glimmer. Yeah. Those my... three I'm more or less always happy for. Razor Sharp Edge I can be either very happy for or kind of not happy for and the same for Steel Enhancer. Yeah. I mean for me, I think my three are like, I'm always happy for Glimmer, I'm always happy for Wildwood Sap, and I'm always happy for Steel Enhancer because it's okay. Even when it's not good, it's like, it's a net positive, right? And I, I think I'd say I'm always happy to start with Vine Grasp, but that kind of depends on if I'm playing Hellhorn Secondary. Mm -hmm. 
All right, on to the uncommons. Up first here, zero energy spell, apply rooted one to an enemy unit and draw plus one next turn. It is Ensnare. Eh, it's the sting of the uncommons. Yeah, that's a, not a bad way to put it, I guess. It's like, it's really good though. Like In actuality, this card is really good because being able to control how enemies move is really, really nice. Yeah, but then you gotta think about it. Yeah, thinking though. And like it replaces itself, which is cool as well. The, the next turn. Yeah, the next turn. Like a, maybe a decent candidate for Holdover, because Holdover essentially removes it from the deck. It's just giving you the plus one draw to draw itself, and then you yeah, can just yeah. split enemy waves up. I can I can see that. I think it's really good that it costs zero, though. This, this is not an effect that should cost any more than zero. Mm. It's okay. Anything you'd like to add? I haven't played it much, so I can't. Yeah. I can't. I don't have too much. I don't have too much to add. To so it, really. uh, the most important thing to note about this before we move on, because this is something that someone will probably leave a comment about. If you root an enemy against a boss, the boss will kill that enemy when they move up. Yeah, they'll leave it behind. They will. Yeah, they'll just they'll walk <laughs> out there. Like yeah, they're really shitty. Like that's that's we like a real. Can't wait two seconds. Real dick move. I like, can't even just I like, hey, can't. I got you, dude. Piece of shit. It's okay. Uh, up next, zero energy, draw plus three next turn, spell, consume, invigorating solution. I wouldn't say this is an auto-include, but no. I think it's worth considering. It's like, this. I look at this the same way that I look at I said this about a card, uh, Alloy of the Ancients in the Halhorn Rares. This is a card where it's like, yeah, I'll take it, but like, if there's something, there something better. better. Yeah, is there something better? If not, I, this is the, you, you never skip it, more or less. Yeah. But you look for other cards you want instead. Yeah, this is like, because draw plus three next turn is really strong for missing one card on the turn prior. Mm -hmm. So this good. is this is the card. This is the card. I, yes, this is the, the remove consume uh, card I had. Ah. So what I did was I removed consume, mm -hmm. cost one, draw three cards next turn. I then gave it holdover. Mm. So I kept playing it the next turn. I had a bunch of energy. I think I had like four or five energy a turn. Okay. I just kept using it to cycle through my deck. I was I was drawing ten cards every turn. Hey, that sounds pretty good. It, it worked. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a cool little thing. It's hard to get two of the bigger spell upgrades onto it, mm -hmm. and very often you'll have better targets. But if you don't, that's a cool thing you can do. Yeah. I don't think it's actually worth it, but like. No. It was fun. I think holdover is very a, a very premium choice. So throwing it on something like that is you know is good. But I think there's probably going to be a better choice. But still, yeah, that's cool. It's a good use of that remove consume as well. Yeah. I, I haven't really taken this that much. I don't even have a gold. I think I only... I'll take it every now and then, like I said, if, if I had not offered something better. I agree. Uh, up next. Oh, God. Zero energy spell. Consume. Add three sting spells to your hand. Preserve thorns. I mean, this is, in my opinion, like strictly better than sting. Well, yeah, it's three you get, stings. You get, th you get three of them. You get three stings, eh. right? So eh. zero cost, 15 damage to the front enemy. If you evaluate it that way, it's not bad. And then you draw three cards the next turn. The only yeah. downside is you now have three stings in your deck. Yeah, it's like you're, you're getting to draw three extra cards on your next turn, but then you have three turns coming up where you're going to essentially be drawing a worthless card. But then after playing that worthless card, you get more draws the turn after. Yeah, I, I think that the downside of putting the three stings in isn't huge because, you know, the fight will, there's a good chance the fight will end before you draw those stings again. Yeah, I mean, it depends on where you are in the game. I don't know, it's, I'm, I'm very, very cautious of adding clutter to the decks. I think that most of my winning runs have, at the, like, after I've gone through the deck the first time, I'm down to, like, seven cards or so like probably not probably not seven because including the dead weights and other things like that i i try to aim for around like 13 ish cards because then on something like seraph you play through the deck your entire your entire time through the first time and you get through it say like five turns and then you have like three turns before seraph spawns you can still get through like one or two more times depending on how good your cycle is mm -hmm. and so i'm very cautious of a card like preserve thorns for that because adding three stings does slow you down a little bit yeah one thing we forgot to talk about that we that we should have done with just when we brought up Sting normally is that there's a lot of relics that uh, enhance Stings. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean specifically just two, I guess. Yeah, there's, uh, there's... Three if you count the one that makes a Sting every turn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
And it's like but, the worst obstacle. Yeah, yeah. But, but the yeah. other two, the plus 20 and then the plus 10 and Pierce's armor, right? Or mm-hmm. spell pierce? That is correct. Uh, if you have either or both of those, do you take preserve thorns always? No, because I don't take those. That's a good point. Let, let's say you've just been given one somehow magically. Uh, I mean, then, yeah. Like, if I've been... Someone broke in here and held me at gunpoint and said, you have to take the next thing relic you see or else I'll shoot you. First, I'll go, no, uh, you can just shoot me. I don't negotiate with terrorists. But then, in the alternate reality where I do the reasonable thing and just take the relic, I would probably take Preserve Thorns. Yeah, I think then it's 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 definitely better. When you think about it like that, like, if you have the plus 20 damage, this is zero cost... 75 yeah 75 damage mm-hmm. to the front that's like that's a good rate yeah it's like i don't know it's okay i feel like a lot of combats you do need a little more damage than that like if you're going against two guys with 6 105 75 damage isn't a whole lot of damage right but still it's like it's it's hard to argue against it right zero zero cost like it's a good it's a good relic and sting in general like if you have the relic for it you can take it i just don't necessarily love it I think the piercing one is a little better because if you give that plus 10 in piercing, you actually get to pop every single frontline armor tank in the game. Yeah, that's a pretty good thing it does too. Alright, anything else? No. Alright, our first unit. 1 energy, 25 attack, 3 health, 2 space, quick, animus of speed. Is this the only unit in the game? Huh? It's sketchy. Yeah. Is this the only unit in the game that has quick printed on it naturally? Um. I think it might be. Let me do a little search here. You do All a keyword units. search. Quick. She is. This is the only unit in the game with quick on it naturally. Now, how good is quick? Ah. It, oh, I mean, it's it's it's. I think better on like those like high damage, high HP units in the first place, right? Like you know. Yeah. Your your shadow siege, which is more- <laughs> <laughs> but like it's 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 better when the person isn't relying on killing everything, right? Yeah. If this unit goes like, oh, if I take one hit, I die. Quick might not be for you. Yeah, quick is quick. I mean, I think animus of speed is just like you throw her like maybe multi strike and you just slap her down behind your awoken. I've taken her a few times just to be like, hey, here's twenty five damage consistently for one energy. Yeah, However, the, the quick part is not why you play her. No, yeah. Which, which, she, is, she is a fake uh, horned warrior. Yes, yeah. I think her big problem is that she's just outclassed by the next unit in every single capacity, in my opinion. Yeah. But I have taken her every now and then. You just throw her down behind a tank, and it's like, hey, this is 25 damage every round. It's cool. However, if Animus of Will, or Animus of Speed, sorry, is your main plan you are never taking spikes because she's going to die so fast unless you throw her a health upgrade but you know all right you ready to move on i think so up next we have the better animus one energy three attack three health two space and multi strike two taking her to a three times three animus of will she's even doing the laser eye uh meme Ooh, like, she yeah. is Animus of speed is sleep, animus of will is... You're kill. right. You're right, she is doing the laser eye meme. And she's also way better than animus of speed because she literally triples the effects of buffs and there's a lot, there's two buff cards that we talked about in the last, uh, in the comment section, right? Mm-hmm. She does carry attack buffs well. Yeah, obviously. I think animus of will is a build around like you get this card and then you just hardcore build around or you throw her some health if you have the space you can throw a large stone otherwise i think she makes the best use of the plus five plus ten plus five attack plus ten health buff because that lets you gonna mention that as well Mm -hmm. and you know if you really love the quick from animus of speed you can just not drop 90 gold on her to get quick i wouldn't no i wouldn't either but you know if you're if you're sitting there and you're like god but i really like quick please you could yeah you could <laughs> I don't, you could now and one thing to say about animus of will versus animus of speed is that if you don't build around animus of will she sucks like so bad animus oh, of speed yeah, our classes are like crazy this unit does nine damage but that's not great that is, that is like that is nothing you don't kill anything with that but, you know, you throw, you throw her a bone, you throw her, like, plus 5, plus 10, you throw her plus 10 attack, you throw her, you know, whatever, and she can she can hard carry for you. She's good. 
Anything else? Nah. All right. Up next is one energy, 15 attack, 15 health, three space, summon, gain 60 max health, rejuvenate, plus one attack, plus one health, awoken hollow. Our first awoken boy. He is thick. He is thick. He's really thick. Um, uh, just, just to clarify, mm -hmm. the gaining, gaining 60 max health does not mean that the hollow gains 60 health. Correct. They start with 15 still, and you have to heal them back up to gain that the benefit of that extra health. Yes, an important thing to take a note of. Mm -hmm. he, you do need some sort of healing engine to get this guy back off the ground, and it is not a bad idea to just throw him like a plus 25 health just to make sure he gets off the ground okay. Yeah. He's good. I, you know, if you take a bunch of regen, you stack like 30 regen on this boy, he carries you pretty easily. Yeah, but between and his uh, brother Thorn Hollow, I generally prefer Thorn, but they both they both perform the tank role well enough. Mm -hmm. I think the I, I'll take either one. I don't actually really have a preference. I have of course had great runs with Thorn Hollow. Thorn Hollow does do excellent work, but Awoken Hollow does fine as well. He gets to be pretty beefy if you get like 30, 40 regen on him, and he does the little back and forth. Mm -hmm. He'll get to be up there. He'll get to be some pretty big damage. Throw him a multi strike. He can probably carry. I, yeah, he he definitely can. I just had more like I think the 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 spikes being built into Thorn Hollow makes him a better candidate at face value. Like, he needs no, mm -hmm. he is, he doesn't need multi strike. I guess is the thing. Like it's yeah, not impossible to get multi strike, but it's not guaranteed either. Right now, one thing that's important to note is that something that's weird about the unit composition, in my opinion, of Awoken is that. Awoken Hollow is like, he's a big beef lord, you don't ever play this guy alongside your sentient, like, he's he's a three space boy. Mm -hmm. He, you pretty much have to put him with one of the animuses or, if you know, one of your other clan units, but he takes I, up three I, space. I, yeah, yeah, and also, like, you know, very often you don't want to put your tanks on the same floor anyway, right? Right. It's if just... Sentient, sentient, if you spike sentient, spike sentient belongs on the first floor, Awoken Hollow, you need some time to start scaling up so put him on the second or third floor right slap, it's slap a sap on him it's just interesting because you you basically ha are forced if you take a woken hall you're forced to set up on like two or even three floors mm -hmm. which is interesting i think the awoken is one of the few clans that really has that sort of a situation where it's like you're gonna maybe want to have like three floors ready to go prepped with all these units filling them out depending on what you're taking anyway yes i agree uh, up next, one energy, zero attack, five health, one space. Healing spells cast on this floor cost minus one energy. Edge prior. This is like the first actual like straight up utility unit we've seen so far, right? Like the Hellhorn. You could I guess consider the Deranged Root a utility unit. Well, every imp is like a utility unit though, but like they're like a single use utility. Yeah. They, like so. every every clan has their utility types, but. And they're just kind of different, right? Because like the Umbra have the Morsel creators and Morsel masters, and then Stygian have the channel or, or not the channelers, the like, you know, the guys who to to they have totems and they have the the two little boys that create. Oh, the cuttlefish. Yeah, and then I don't. Wait, does Melting have it? I guess Melting doesn't have one, but everyone except for Melting has it, right? Because you can consider the imps in the same sort of category. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to say about Edge Pyre because I'm pretty sure I've never played him in my life. <laughs> I've had times where it's been okay, but like, I don't know. You need like, you need like, in my opinion, really, like, really beneficial and like a lot of rejuvenate synergies. Like for like, you, you need like, Awoken Hollow and uh, Thorn Hollow and the rejuvenate uh, champion and uh, like infinite heal spells. Right? Yeah, you need a lot of draw to go with that though, right? I just I feel like he's outclassed by the ability. To give your your cards minus one energy. Yeah, that's also true. I've had I've just had I've had times though where I've had this guy sitting there, and then I'll be able to cast all of my restores for free, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But, but is that worth a slot in your deck? Yeah. Sure, no. The the big thing as well is like the only place you're really going to be playing this guy unless you take a uh, space upgrade is you're going to be playing him behind like sentient plus a two space unit, right? Because you don't, like like I said, like I pointed out, kind of pointed out for this guy in particular, Awoken Hollow plus Animus of Speed or Animus of Will, that's your entire floor. Like, that's it. That's five space. You, unless you're taking space for some reason. And, yeah, I like taking space. 
Yeah, but like, are you really taking space just to put down edge prior? No, because I sure. Yeah, you're doing it for edge prior. You're doing it. For yeah, the you wrong. got you got you, you fucked up. Is what happened. Yeah. Oh, I I just don't think he's very worth it. But to be fair, to edge prior, I've never taken him. So, you know, maybe one day edge prior. Keep dreaming. Up next, one energy spell. Restore one health. Gain one energy. Draw plus one next turn. And graph. What a weird card. Um, I, I figured out that I, I learned that I kind of like this card. I also think it's okay. You need to have Rejuvenates to trigger with it or else it's just a worthless pickup. But like, if you have... I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Necessarily. Okay, go on. I'm uh, listening. Just, just giving it a, a plus 10 spell power upgrade, uh -huh. does, it, it makes it much better. Okay. It, it's, it's free heals. That's true. It is 11 health. And then if you give it holdover, yeah, it's free heals forever. That is true. I I, and it itself. I would say this card is very strong when you give it holdover and you have a rejuvenate unit because then this is just going to trigger rejuvenate for you for free every turn yeah. for the rest of your yes. combat. I, I should say that you do need a rejuvenate unit for it to be worthwhile. Yeah, it, it's still not good. It's still not bad on its own. Like what I said, like what I said before about you know putting some cool buffs on it, but. You're A, often gonna have better cards to put buffs on. And then B, uh, you know. I mean you're gonna you're gonna probably have a rejuvenate unit if you're playing uh Awoken. Yeah, most likely. But if you don't have one, don't take it. Yeah. Like if if you have rejuvenate, take this. Uh, otherwise probably not. But like if it starts in your deck, because any of these uncommons you can have a one of if you start as Awoken as your main, not a bad card to start with. I Actually, would I would I would actually say I would go as far as to say that you should not take it unless you a have rejuvenate and then b as well have a no good targets in your deck for holdover. Right. I think you need those two things. Yeah. Like if you have nothing in your deck that likes holdover and you're like, oh, I've been given it in graft. Next time I see holdover, I'll put it on here. It kind of it kind of falls into like the same place as invigorating solution in my mind, where it's like this is not that harmful to take, but there's probably something better. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Like, it's it's fine. It's not nuts. It's just, it's basically just giving a unit plus one plus one each turn into the best case, which, is that even that worth it? Yeah, it depends. Uh, up next, one energy, three attack, 30 health, sweep, two capacity, husk, hermit. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Fuck this unit. Oh my god. I fuck, I fuck this idiot. He's, he's <laughs> so bad. He is, uh, confused. He's very confused. He's like, I'm a tank, but also I hit. Yeah. Uh, he's meant to be a, a tank that hits backline, right? Like, that's the whole point. Yeah, but that sucks. But, like, yeah, but, like, it, 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 like, it can kill backline. But, but, like, it's just not tanky enough. When you, once you get to, like, floor six, seven, and eight, he might still be killing backlines, but he's gonna die in, like, you know, two or three turns. I mean, and then while... The Awoken Hollow is just gonna laugh at him the whole time. <laughs> He's gonna die in like two rounds on floor two, depending on what you're fighting. He sucks. He's really bad. I took this guy, this is what I hinged my first ever run of this game on. I got the duplicated unit five times and I was like, oh my god. Sweep and I gave him large stone? He's gonna go insane. And then I lost, because he sucked. Yeah. That's not good. I think that, uh, don't get me wrong, I think that sweep is okay, but I think that the devs overshot how valuable sweep is giving this guy three attack especially on higher covenants he's just like he's now, now do you think that if he is, his base attack was five do you think that'd be like a, a difference maker no because i think that he's just outclassed in every single way by the other sweep unit and it's not close mm -hmm. the only way you make husk hermit better is you give him like an extra 20 health and then maybe i'll think about it but even yeah, then i'm okay. like what about well, okay you know final offer two attack 10 health like maybe, right? Because then it's pretty, it's kind of value for the first few floors, right? But still, he's not going to win you any prizes. But like, you, you give him plus, plus two attack, he's at five attack, you throw quick on him, he just wipes out backline for the entire game, and that's okay. But like, I, like I should say, quick plus, quick plus sleep, sleep? Oh my god. Quick plus sweep. I don't know why that one was so hard. It's a good combo, however, I just think that the Husk Hermit I would like you, the husk. You're putting, you're putting quick on your husk hermit. He's gonna die even sooner. <laughs> yeah, you know it's just I, look, husk hermit is just outclassed by the other husk. We'll talk about it yeah. when we flip the page. But just like, eat shit, nerd. You're like maybe one of the worst units in this game to me. 
That's what about we just talked about Edge Pryor. Yeah, but like Edge Pryor is not a unit. He's a joke. Oh my god. Uh, anything you want to say about House Kermit? I kind of went in on him there. I feel I feel bad for him. I don't think he's as bad. Like he's he's not good. I he's agree. Terrible. Like, he's having such a bad like. Look at his bad. He's having a bad hair day. He's just having a bad day now. Like it's terrible. The, the probably the best way you can look at this unit if you wanna if you want him to be good is you slap him down in your back line and then you look at him as like okay I'm gonna give this like multi strike I'm gonna give him plus ten attack and I'm going to spam razor sharp edge on him and then maybe eventually he becomes a contributing member to society but let's be honest now boy you've hinted, you've hinted at this before but there's a better unit to do that with that, yeah I know I know well you know we're talking about Husk Kermit right now so if you're yeah, if you're yeah. Team Husk Kermit yeah, there's hope. Husk. I'm not Team Husk Kermit. I'm just talking to all the Team Husk Kermits out there. Let's move on. You ready? Yeah. Up next, one energy spell. Consume, apply four spikes, pyre shards. It's like, it's just so... I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, it's like... Why take this? It's okay. What, what, what are you putting spikes on where it's like, oh, thank god I added four more spikes for this one, one, one energy. Like, basically... The only situation is you put this on Awoken Hollow. And he doesn't even care that much. Yeah, but like it'll like, it'll like, like maybe you're in a situation where you have no way to kill backline, so you take Pyre shards, you throw it on your Awoken Hollow, and then he kills all the backline for you. That's it. I don't know. The biggest the biggest thing that I have as a problem with Pyre shards is a lot of times I start my runs with Sharpen because of that effect. And then I'm like, why would I ever take Pyre Shards? I already have the ability to apply four spikes and feel bad about myself. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I, I think I think it, I think it's better than uh, Sharpen. Yeah, I mean it is, but like when you have Sharpen, I'm not gonna take Pyre Shards. Yeah, I agree. Eh, I mean, there's not much to say about it, right? It's so it's like such a bland card. It does mm -hmm. so little in the grand scheme of things. Ready to go. Next page. Next page. Oh, well, well, well. One energy, three attack, ten health. Sweep, slay plus two, shattered shell. Did I say Be two careful. capacity? I think, I don't know, maybe. Two capacity. Uh, hey, look, it's, it's, uh, I already it's forgot good. the other idiot's name, you but better. Be care careful who you make fun of in high school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he may break out of his shell and then have even worse hair underneath. Yeah, um, I, I can't stop seeing this unit as just like hair now. I'm sorry. I don't like it. This is way um, better. Yeah, it is better, right? Like, this this thing has a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. it, it wants to kill. Yeah, he... But so basically with Shattered Shell, what, what he is, he's never going to kill Frontline. But the Slay plus two lets him scale up to a point where he'll do a decent chunk out of Frontline. And on the way there, he just wipes out Backline. This is a guy you throw quick on him and he clears the entire enemy back row constantly for you and you don't need to take any cards to snipe backline or anything like that uh like i feel i feel like like i don't like i don't like quick on him that much i, I get where you're coming from and it's cool as well because then it keeps your your frontline guy healthy but like what about like you, I, I i've always thought of more like going like multi-strike plus 10 attack i mean but why because then, then he 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 does so much damage he so multi strike plus ten attack. He's gonna do like twenty six to the enemy frontliners, which is not a lot. Yeah, and, that's you know, true. As he scales up, he'll get to like maybe at the end of the combat, he'll be somewhere in like the forty two yeah, or maybe, 450 maybe, range. Maybe, maybe plus ten attack is not where you want to go with it. No, but I, I, I think I think multi strike is a higher priority over quick to get those to get more benefit out of the slay triggers. I don't know. I think that the slay triggers are always going to trigger because you're going to pick off the back lines pretty much always, unless... Oh, I, I'm not saying to acquire the slay triggers. I'm saying to benefit from them afterwards. Yeah, I, I, just, I don't think that he's going to... I think you, you need a better plan to kill the heavy frontliners than the, like, 20 damage that Shattered Shell is going to get for you. For me, personally, I think, like, I honestly, probably quick, and, like, maybe I'd give him plus 5, plus 10, just so he doesn't get sniped by... Uh, enemy attacks however this guy has three attacks something very important to keep in mind is you're probably going to need to prioritize giving him a straight up plus 10 if you're against the seraph that enters your units with sap because otherwise like if you don't plan for that oh, this guy never yeah. gets to hit I, I remember i remember watching that happen to you mm -hmm. i've had that happen to me a few times with like cold kalia where mm -hmm. you go into that fight you got a fun little sweep unit that does a cool little effect at one attack and then they just never get to attack because sap straight to hell you got to keep that in mind. A big. I guess we forgot to mention that before with uh, 
edge prior, uh, zero attack units, they're safe from spikes. That's true, they, they do, do not, not attack. actually trigger an attack. Yep, never attack. Edge prior. So that's a, an important mechanic. Yeah, it is It is something to note. He'll, he'll only die to sweep. I, I just, I think Shattered Shell is good if, here, here's your circumstance, you take Shattered Shell if you have no way to target backline down because he'll kill all backline mm -hmm. forever. And he's cool. He's Husk Hermit, but better in every way. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no. All right. Up next, one energy, five attack, 15 health, three space. Summon, gain 40 max health. Rejuvenate, gain spikes too. Thorned Hollow. The other of the Hollow Brothers. He's good. I, I think I just like spikes too much. I really like like spikes on this unit specifically because like every time I play this unit, I put him in I put him in row two. I just put all my restores on him. By the time the boss shows up, he's got forty spikes. Yeah, I mean, how that happen? That's great. <laughs> my big problem is that while doing that, the enemies just walk past him because he does like that five damage and I lose. Like that's what's always happening to me, which we, is why we I... have mentioned that quite a few times yeah. about how about how you know a lot of these units, even like the the uh, the the husk hermit and shattered shell, they'll let the front line keep going and yeah the front line will get to your pyre if you don't have a way to take care of them this is probably awoken's biggest problem is that enemies just walk right past awoken constantly heavy's just uh yeah goodbye i have 100 health and you do five damage around see you later nerd and then there's walk up and do like 40 to you awoken really needs help from another class for that or you need to take a card to specifically deal with heavies i think but like they have so many like good ways of just wiping out the entire back line though. Mm -hmm. And also yeah. Awoken has a lot of really good ways to kill bosses. Yes. It's just killing heavies. Yeah, if you get to the boss, it's great. If the if the heavies kill your pyre before the boss shows up, it's an issue. Yeah. But Thorned Hollow is great. I think that this hollow and like I said, I think I think of this guy and uh, Awoken Hollow about the same. They're pretty close. I like I said, I think I like spikes too much, so I, I tend to prefer Thorned Hollow, but they're mm -hmm. both they're both good at what they do. Now, we did neglect to mention on the last one the biggest synergy of all. Summon gain 40 max health. You do get to combo that with Transcend Imp. He does get 40 max oh, health. yep, yep, yep. Beefy Imp, we forgot. Uh-huh, uh -huh. just, just keep that in mind. If you play two Hollows, he does get 100 health. So, you know, Transcend Imp synergy, maybe? I don't know. No. No? no. <laughs> I know. I know the answer's no. <laughs> all right. Uh... Yeah, Thorn Hall is good. He's a win condition, same as Awoken Hall. Stack a bunch of regen, he'll kill every boss for you. He's good. Just gotta deal with heavies. Anything else? No. Alright. One energy, zero attack, two health. Draw plus one each turn, one space, Wildwood Custodian. Uh, without a doubt, this is the best channeler in the set to me. Yeah. He's really good. He's I mean, if you're going heavy on spikes, I'd say the the rare one coming up is better. But like, I, just like he's he's pretty good. This guy's yeah. pretty good. You know, you just you just plop him down behind some tanks on a floor that like you know doesn't have a whole lot going on. Yeah, go slap him top floor if they're never getting up there. Go put him behind in free space on like your bottom floor mm -hmm. behind your sentient. He's good. Draw plus one each turn. It's literally like four one energy. And the card slot in your deck, you're getting the effect of, like, a boss artifact, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Drawing faster is good, lets you cycle through quick. He's good. Nothing really more to say about him. I think that, you know, similar to the zero energy draw plus three next turn, this card I would only ever not take if it's like, I don't, I, there's a better card here. We didn't, we didn't talk about this because when we talked about uh, uh, Richard Pryor, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. he... We, we more or less agree we almost never take him. Yeah. Uh, Custodian, how often do you find yourself putting a damage upgrade or something on him from a shop because you have no other units that can carry it well? Never. I've never it's done like, that. It's like, you've never been like, it's either this or a train steward gets this plus 10 attack. I would give it to the or... train steward. <laughs> you're giving it to the train steward? Or... I would give it to the train steward. You're, you're that worried about about spikes? I'm not even worried about spikes. Right? I just think it sucks. Like, why would I? Why would I not just give it to the train steward? Well, I mean, I, I have a I have a personal philosophy that like giving zero attack units some attack so that way they're contributing in combat is a cool thing that you should try to do if you have no better source or no better target for that uh, damage upgrade. I disagree. I mean, I honestly, if you if that ten damage is the difference between the enemy killing you or not killing you, like 
You were fucked anyway. Well, it's not just 10 damage, when it's against a boss and it's hiding behind a tank for 8 million rounds. I just, it adds I, up. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Especially against bosses like Thorned Hollow, Woken Hollow, they'll just carry you through the boss fight anyway. You shouldn't need that extra 10 damage. Yeah, but like, but, you know. You know, you can do it, sure. I don't see why not. I've actually, I have been taking buffs and just throwing like a plus 5, plus 10 on a train steward and letting that guy ride, right? It's actually been pretty valuable, so I can see it. I think that I would rather give him like plus 5, plus 10 and then maybe throw him a plus 10 as well. I, I would I would say plus five plus ten is a much better buff on him. But just mm -hmm. like just like in this, I think it's important or it's a, it's worth pointing out that like hey, sometimes maybe give him an attack buff so that way he's helping a little bit in combat because you know then he can pick off a backline unit if the tank spent all their time killing the front line. Oh, you know the thing is, I, I finally realized the real answer to your question, which is I don't I, I look at my deck and if I don't have like at least two units that have multiple upgrades that they want, I don't go to shops that can get unit upgrades. I take the other path. Like, pretty much at all costs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, you know, given the circumstances, sure, I'll throw him a plus 10 if it's, like, ah, it's 25 gold. Sure, like, why not? I've never done it, but I do this, I follow this philosophy and just throw Terrain Stewards a bone every now and then. That's so okay. Up next, two energy spell. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to 10 times the amount of spikes on friendly units. Bramble Lash. Man, Battering Ram is just so <laughs> jealous. Battering Ram is crying. Lash. Uh, it's 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 it does the same role, but it's just so much more consistent because enemies, unless you're your Seraph of the Chaste, enemies can't remove your spikes. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if you have the Sentient at level two, this does 200 damage that literally kills every single unit in the game. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a unit that has more than 200 health. I think the highest health unit you can have in the game is Gilded Wings at 190. But, uh, what about Seraph? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you're not casting Bramble Ash on Seraph. I've cast Bramble Ash on Seraph before. Did it make a difference? Yeah, uh, it, 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 it can, it's 400 damage sometimes. Yeah, it is, but like, you know, even basically at level 2 of the Sentient, this card kills every single frontliner that you'll encounter at level 2 of the Sentient. Like, 200 damage is a lot of damage. The only way you don't kill the unit is like if you harvest them to Crazy Town. Mm -hmm. It's good, but I'd honestly, in two energy, this card's hard to play. I don't really take it that often. Uh, I take it pretty often. Because, it, it, like, obviously, if you're, like, playing spikes, I think I, I maybe take the spike sentient too often. But, like, if you're doing that, then Bramble Ash is your answer to how do you not get walked past by heavies, right? Yeah, Which, yeah exactly. It's so good. This card's the answer to your main problem, so it's, like, really good. For sure. I just, I don't take it very often because I don't really play spikes that much play spikes more honestly i think i need to right i was i was i was on the revenge train for a while and then i started to realize i was dying on floor two because i did no damage mm -hmm. and i started taking spikes it's good i mean shit when, when i started playing this game i would only ever take rejuvenate deal damage i was like this is nuts they're they're both good yeah uh anything else you'd like to add about bramble lash nah all right two energy spell Restore 25 health, draw plus two next turn. Focused growth. Art sucks. What's going, on, what's going on in the art here? <laughs> I don't know. They're just like using the flowers to shoot green healing energy at a yeah, broken tree. Yeah, I mean, is it supposed to be like melding it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like melding it, but naturally with wildwood okay. sap. Okay. This card sucks. I wouldn't go as far as say it sucks. I just think there's so many better healing options in the Awoken uh -huh. that it's pretty bad. And there's like, better. If you have no other healing cards, and you've taken a Thorn Hollow or uh, Awoken Hollow, and you're like, I need something to heal these guys. They suck right now. You can take this. Yeah, I guess. I think the only time I've ever played with this card is when it was my uncommon starting card, and the entire time, I, every time I played it, I just went, "This sucks." Two energy is really prime premium in the early to mid game. I think that basically, if you if you're taking focus growth, you're pretty much committing to taking plus one energy. That's that's something that I think is an important philosophy. Or or, or, or reducing its cost. Yeah, or reducing its cost for sure. If you reduce its cost is pretty good. But like, if you're taking a lot of two cost spells, you're probably committing yourself to taking plus one energy from your first boss, which is fine because two cost spells are pretty cool. Or the other thing to say is like this card is a great trigger for and Bramble Ash same thing. Great trigger for Split Anvil, the uh, relic that makes it so that yes. all cards that cost yeah. less are free. Mm -hmm. Not the best, not the best answer, but like it's a good enough choice. Sure, but I don't like it. I don't really take it that often. I think that it's outclassed by almost every other healing card in this game. Even restored. 
Honestly, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I, mean, I would. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes restore is better. You're not wrong. Which, but like, which, like that, sometimes restore is better than this two energy uncommon. Is like, wow, my starter is better than this piece of shit. I don't like this card. It's but situational. I'll, I'll have a change of heart on it. I'm sure at some point. But for now, nah. Uh, anything else you'd like to say? We we kind of gloss over the draw two next turn. Yeah, because that's worthless. That's, that's it's not worthless. It's, it's it's something. It's something, but like this is a confused card. You're getting what yeah. card advantage as well as healing. I think that the cards need to commit one way or another. I think that I'll really be able to drive home this point when we talk about the card three talk cards from now. Mm -hmm. I think that's where I'll really explain yeah. my feelings towards that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh god, Ugh, I almost I almost dreaded even reviewing this next card. Two energy. What's wrong with, with, with Pyrogrove? <laughs> Two energy, consume, draw one, enhance the drawn card to cost zero. Pyrogrove. I unironically think this is maybe the worst card in the game. I don't disagree. This is such a piece of shit card. There is when nothing good. good. Though. No, there when is nothing good. When it's good, it's good. When it's hey, good. Give me a plan of free Shadow Seed, dude. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Magical Christmas Land. There's, it's just, it's so bad. It doesn't make any sense. Why is this card here? What this, this clan doesn't even have that many big units to play off of this. This clan only has like a few big costed cards. There's, there's a, there's one that costs two. <laughs> there's one that costs two. <laughs> the cost of Pyre grow. Okay, the, let me, the, let me tell you, let me tell you about Magical Christmas Land here. Right? All right, let's go. So you're playing, you're playing Umbra. Uh, awoken, right? Okay, okay. You get Pyre Grow on your start. Uh huh. You get Shadow Siege. Uh huh. You, you buff him up. Uh huh. Right? Okay. You have like triple, double multi strike. Okay. Well, tri a triple multi strike, right? Triple multi strike. Triple, yeah, it's, it's part, magical right? Christmas land. Why not? Yeah. Then you get the event that makes five copies. Okay. Now, how's Pyre Grow looking? <laughs> Fucking awful. <laughs> yeah. Because you die the next fight. Yeah, it's still not good. Cause, okay, let's let's talk about it seriously instead. Of, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you the serious list of reasons why this card sucks. Step one, this card. Oh god, it's just it costs two. It costs two. Step one, it costs two. Step two, it consumes. Step three, you don't know what's on the top of your deck. You never do. You you have no way to know. There is no way outside of like the endless or holdover effects to know what's on top of your deck. So. Like, what the fuck? And then, so, the, the big draw to this card, the reason that this is in the game is because it enhances the drawn card to cause zero, meaning that it costs zero for the rest of the combat. But you're basically passing on two energy to hope you hit something good. It's like, I think, look, I'll put it like this. I think that if this card said a draw a card from your deck and enhance the drawn card to cause zero, I would still think this card was bad. So the fact that you don't even get to choose what you're drawing is like, I don't know. What if it only? Well, 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 first off, let's let's point out if it costs zero, it'll be an amazing card. Yeah, I mean, sure. Then it's an auto include. Yeah. And if it costs one, it's like passable. Yeah. I, but at the two issue, costs, it's the bad. issue is that it, it costs two, and then like You're the some... best, like, the realistic best case scenario is you have a three cost card. It's now making cost zero yeah. over and over again, right? Like like awake, right? Yeah, it, awake. It, literally, it, that's it. That's what you're trying to hit. I mean, yeah, you're trying to do something like that where you're hitting an expensive card that you can play repeatedly. Let me tell you about my experience with Pyro Grow. I got this in my starting deck once, and then uh, I only lived for four combats because the deck sucked, and in three of those four combats, Pyro Grow drew me dead weight. And wow. then I went, hey, this card sucks. It, I played it once and it drew me Vine Grass, but I never played it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's also just so many zero costs. Like, God, fuck off, Pyro Grow. Get this piece of shit out of my face. Up next. Two energy spell, descend a unit, restore 10 health, restoring retreat. This card's weird. It is weird. It's, I think the, the thing that's really weird about this card to me is that Melting has Dripfall, which is just descend a unit, and that also costs two. Mm -hmm. so I, it's obviously, you know, better for your units. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played this on one of my own units. I only ever use this to descend enemies and buy myself more time. And it's still it's still good for that. Yeah, I mean it's fine, right? Descending a unit is good. Being able to split healers or tanks or DPS from their group is really good. It messes with enemy spawns. Maybe you like get to 
hit an extra little bit in there on an enemy who barely escaped you and, you know, mm. keeps them in the room against your sweep enemies as well. It does heal the enemies for 10, but, you know, it's fine. Like, cards just a basically I read this as descend a unit, and that yeah. is a good enough effect. Uh, you know, with all the enemy movement cards, they always hold uh, permafrost well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a good upgrade for it, but other than that, like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, the there, there's two ca there's two uses for this, right? This is either you drop an enemy unit, or you use this to heal a unit on the bottom floor for 10 health on your side. That's not a good value. No, it's terrible, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's worse restoration detonation than, but, you know, it's the flexibility. Maybe every now and then this saves your run because of the flexibility. But for the most part, it's like, yeah. Who, who is that? I don't know. Is that, like the, is that like the Ironclad younger brother? I think that's supposed Clouded to. Up the mines? That's got to be some of the uh, like some of the dudes invading Hell, right? Because he's got the little mask on. He's got a he's got an earring, I think. I think that's like a clergyman or something like that. You're right, though. I didn't, I didn't even like bad night at the fact that there's just a dude in that card art, which I think that's the only card art in the, the set with a man in it. Yeah. Weird. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, finally, in the uncommon set. Three energy spell, restore 30 health, apply a regen 4, awake. Card's fine. Yeah, what, what do you think is more important, the 30 health or the 4 regen? Uh, probably the 4 regen. I might agree, it's tough. Like, you think, like, you know, it's such, a, it's such a smaller number. But, but like, four regen, regen 4 is strong. That's really good. It just shows, it just shows how strong uh, Sap is, honestly. Yeah. I mean, here's the big thing, right? This is a problem that we can't discuss until we get into the rare cards, but every single card that says restore X amount of health on it just sucks in comparison to one of the rare cards, and it's not close. Like, it's crazy how much this sucks. Yeah, that's true. We'll talk about it, of course. I Awake is just fine. Like, I really have nothing to say. I'll take this card if I don't have a better choice, if I'm trying to build out regen. You throw out a few cost reductions, card's cool. It's like, it, it does a better job of what focus growth is more or less trying to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I said I'd talk about it more. This card is better focus growth. Like, I'll pay the one extra energy because two to three energy isn't that big of a jump. And instead of drawing two, you get that four regen. And that's way better. Like, that's so, so much better. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say about Awake before we move on to the rares? Uh, not really. All right, general closing thoughts. Uh, awoken uncommons. Uh, you know, good beef. They got they yeah. got some beef cakes in here. They have. I think. I think awoken has some of the best uncommon units and some of just like some real clunker spells. Mm -hmm. Like animus of will, cool. The both both of the awoken boys, cool. Shattered shell, cool. Pyre grow, one of the worst cards in this game. <laughs> yeah. Fucking focused growth, get it away from me. Uh, preserve thorns. Edge Prior, and fucking Husk Hermit, Pyre Shards. There's just, there's so much mediocrity in here as well. Let's go to the rares, shall we? Okay. Starting off here. Uh, is this the first X cost of the Awoken set? Is this the only X cost Awoken has? I think it is. Sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Awoken's Rail Spike. X cost, consume, draw X, enhance all cards drawn this way with minus two. Let me tell you, I'm glad this is the only X card in Awoken set, because this fucking sucks. Yeah, it's not great. This is really bad. It's good that it's good that most of the Awoken's cards <laughs> only cost uh, two. Yeah. The exception two cards. That way, like, all of the cards you draw will be able to be played afterwards. But mm -hmm. you need energy. Yeah, I mean... If you have a way to generate 10 energy, cool, but, like... The big thing... Fun. Really, you pointed out something very good there, which is that uh, it is. There's only two cards in the Awoken set that cost more than two. But, you know, you're playing a second clan alongside this. I think that Awoken's Rail Spike is just better Pyre Grow, first of all. Yeah. And I still think it's bad, however, it's a little less bad. In your Magical Christmas Land, this just hits like your very first copy of, copy of Spreading Spores, and then you, all of your Spreading Spores forever cost zero, for example. Well, in my Magical Christmas Land, I have 10 energy. I play, I draw 10 cards, and they're all free, and they're all Spreading Spores. Right, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a pretty good Magical Christmas Land, I'll say. But, uh, you know, I it's, don't... It, it's tough to get there. So now that we're in the rares, right, you have to remember that when we're in the rares, you're picking these cards. You're not getting forced these cards. So what is the circumstance where you ever take a Woken's Rail Spike? 
Maybe you have wilting sapwood already. Maybe. We'll talk about that when we get there. I don't like that card that much. Maybe. I actually do like that card. I'll go to bat for it. I, I just, I really, I, th I think Awoken's Rail Spike is the worst Rail Spike, and I think it struggles to even be, like, good. You know, Pyrogrow fucking sucks. I also think this sucks. It suffers from the exact same problem. Spend three energy on this. Whoops, I hit dead weight, vine grasp, fucking uh, channel song, dude. Eat shit. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, just garbage. I wouldn't take this pretty much ever. I think this sucks. I would, I'll never, I won't say never, but I'll say often I won't. Okay. I'll allow that. Up next, zero energy spell, unleash the Wildwood, restore friendly units to full health. This is, without a doubt, the best healing card in the game. No yeah, question. I mean, it, it, it does all the heal. It, it literally, put, like, this card is the reason that I think that every other card that says heal units sucks, outside of, like, regen, because this is so much better in every single way. It's just great. Put permafrost on it. Put holdover on it. Wait till your units are open. Like, holdover, I don't know about exactly because like holdover literally just lets this lets you in the worst case trigger rejuvenate on all your units on a floor every turn, and in the best case it just keeps all of your units full health for the entire combat. But it, it does take up a space. Yeah, but like it, you're it, you're taking up a space to make sure that your sentient never dies. That is true. I that's think that that's thing. worth it because like the only thing that kills your sentient, your sentient never gets one rounded at higher like ever. Your sentient never dies in one round unless you took like plus four attack trial and you went against Corrigeman. But everything gets one rounded at that point in the game. And so putting all over on Unleash the Wild would literally just make sure your sentient never die. I think it's good. It, it, it's I agree that it is good. Also, we didn't even talk about how like with the with the hollows, right? If they're you know, when you summon mm -hmm. them, play yep. this, they're full health. Yeah, they're yeah. Huge. They're huge. They're like they're Dying. immediately full health. They're going insane. It's the best healing card in the game, and there's not, like, in terms of just raw healing power, there is nothing that comes close, and it puts every other healing card to shame. The only downside to this card is every other healing card is, like, heal and do something, and all this does is heal, but I think that just healing is still fine. Yeah, but it's this much healing, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all the healing. Mm -hmm. uh, up next, one energy spell, consume, draw a unit, enhance it with plus 20 attack, plus 20 health, zero cost, consume, I think I said consume twice. Channel song. I like this card, and fire, I know you fire don't. Grow. Fire grow is so upset that this card exists. Yeah, like it's just insanely better than Pyre Grow, because you never draw dead weight. Yeah. You think Pyre Grow is good on like Covenant Zero? Hmm. <laughs> just I, like... I'm, not willing to, I'm not willing to answer. Okay. Uh, channel song's fine. You know, the only the only thing that can happen is you can draw all your units before it, but this will pull units from your discard pile, so you can just like leave one behind. And even if this hits a train steward, it's fine. The train steward becomes beefy. It's yeah, like that that is the worst case where you hit a train steward. Mm -hmm. When you get to the point in the game where you should have removed all your train stewards, then it's just like you know, big money. Yeah, you hit a plus twenty, plus twenty on like your animus of will. I've 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 had games where I've won because Channel Song hit Consumer of Crowns, <laughs> and yeah. it was just like, oh, cool, that's neat. Like, yeah. I gave a multi strike. I think like, that I think the Channel Song is just good. I think that this is another one of those cards where it's like, there's no reason not to take this outside of there's a better thing on option, right? In terms of in your hand, it replaces itself with a unit and it enhances the unit and it costs zero, so you're not losing energy, and then it's gone from the deck. And when you have the setup for it, it's a great it's a great target for permafrost too. Like you said, yeah. you can just wait to play all your other units, the unit that you want buffed, like your animus of will. Uh, that's the right animus, right? Yeah, the three attack. Yeah. yeah, you then you then channel song animus of will out. That's a good unit. It is a good unit. Just right out the gate, you got a twenty three times three with twenty three health. Yeah, that's good. Channel song's all right. You know, it's like it's just take a better rare over it, but for the most part, take it. Honestly. If you if you have if you have a unit that it works well with, then yeah. I think you take it. But if you're if you're if you're speculating, you can speculate it. You can you can take it when you don't have a good unit, but if you have other better choices. Oh you, know. you know, we haven't done a whole lot of talking about combinations, however, this is one that I do have a clan combo that I would like to point out. Mm -hmm. Avoid channel song at all costs if you're playing melting. Oh dread or oh, get yeah. the, the, the yeah. uh, you're just going to be pulling out a 2 burnout 29-23 that dies the next turn. Mm -hmm. 
I saw. Uh, up next, one energy, zero attack, two health. Spikes on friendly units deal plus one damage per stack. One space, shard channeler. I, I said before I, I I like this one. You said the the uh, the card draw one was your favorite. Yeah. Uh, utility unit. I, I'll say that the card draw is better overall. But if you have you know big spike energy, mm -hmm. it, it's double spikes. Yeah. I mean he's fine, right? I've thrown him down. I've had spikes doing like two seventy around and things like that. I've had the crazy spike build. He's good for that. But I feel yeah. like typically if you're running a crazy spike build, this guy doesn't really need to be there. That's true as well. I, like, I mean, I haven't had too much experience at super high, uh, uh, super high covenants with him yet. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be shocked if you do need him at that. If you like, if spikes are your more or less only source of damage, you might need channeler to kill bosses. Yeah, I mean, typically you don't need channeler to kill bosses. You just need a lot of regen, in my opinion. Unless you're, like, t putting a ton of spikes onto your sentient as your plan, but then you, like, took what? You took a bunch of cards that had spikes? That's kind of weird. Now, one thing to point out, I think, something that's important to note, is that Shard Channeler, as well as our next unit that we're going to be talking about, are both cards that their card text is also printed on an artifact. There is an that's artifact true. that says literally this exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think that artifact is better than Shard Channeler. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, there's that's no not, doubt that's about not a fair it. comparison. Mm -mm. Um, he's fine. Like he's he's okay yeah. if you're going spikes and you really want him. Mm -hmm. Anything else you like? Would, I would say, I would I would say I would say that you unlike channel song is not worth speculating into shard channeler. No, absolutely have, not. If you if you don't have spikes, I would even maybe go as far as say if you're not if you're not playing uh, spike oh, yeah. Tien. Yeah. If you're not playing uh, the Thorn Sentient, it's just not its not worth even taking Shard Channeler then. Yeah, not really. Uh, up next, 1 energy, 0 attack, 20 health, 2 space, resolve, add a sting spell to your hand, Vine Mother. I have a sneaking suspicion you don't like Vine Mother. <laughs> no, it's so, here's the thing, I would, it, unless, up until this moment, I don't think I knew Vine Mother was in this game. Oh my god. I've used this unit once, like, maybe 80 hours of gameplay ago, and I have never seen her since. Like, I, I think of Vine Mother about as often as I think of Deranged Brute, which is to say not at all. And I also think that Vine Mother sucks. I think that the relic that gives you a sting spell every combat, like, at the start of every round sucks, and I think that paying one energy and a card in your deck to get that relic also sucks. However, you know, you get one of the spite or the sting enhanced relics and then you can maybe do something fun with that i guess yeah i think if you have one of those it's like it's worth considering you just put her on the top floor yeah and hopefully kill everything before they get to her yeah uh, and she kind of can be a tank 20 hp isn't nothing but it's not great either yeah like early game she could tank but you're not gonna have this early game she is rare yeah okay i don't have anything else to say would you like to defend vine mother is she like a green beam? <laughs> yeah, I think she might be. I think she's a beam. I didn't really expect them to be able to make a plant look elderly, and yet the lady in there, she looks very old. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready to move on. Alright. One energy, spell, consume, apply quick, wildwood tome. Eh. It, it's you know it's, it only costs one for a reason it's the lowest impact tome probably yeah it's like it's fine right i have had a lot of runs where taking quick is the make or break decision right sometimes quick on a unit that sweeps backline is game winning on seraph especially if you're going against the seraph that spawns those uh 15 times two health 15 times two attack boys with the three health because those guys will just ruin you I thought they had five health. Do they only have three? I'm pretty sure they have three. No, it is five. It is five, because the Molting Imp killed them exactly. You are mm -hmm. correct. Those boys, they... Like, you, if you have a quick unit that sweeps them, it will be, like, a difference maker on the run, because there is almost nothing in the game that su su survives their damage. They do, like, 60 around plus another 15 plus 10. They'll do, they're doing upwards of, like, 80 around on you. I, I guess I've I've come to realize that the issue with quick is that late game when it stops killing the front line, it's an issue. So having it on sweep is pretty cool. Yeah, having that's... access to sweep units with the awoken is a good thing, but mm -hmm. uh, you gotta get them both together. Yeah, you you'll get it like this, right? Wildwood Tome. It's weird because 
There's not a whole lot of... I mean, there is, right? One Horn's Tome also is the same thing. This is paying a card slot for an upgrade slot uh, that's flexible, right? Yeah. Because you can get quick as a 90 gold upgrade from your shop, or however much it is. But, like, this Tome is flexible, but you have to draw it. Like, it's it's okay. It's okay. I think I think more often than not, I won't take it. Yeah, it's like, I... If we're do if we're gonna we should do like a each one of the tomes as well, right? Oh, the tier list. Yeah, we, we wanted to tier list these and also the rail spikes. I mean, d this, despite your run going well yesterday, I think I still put uh, the multi strike tome at at the bottom F tier. Mm -hmm. So, um, Wildwood probably like C tier. Yeah, Wildwood tome is always good, but the impact is like minor. So you have to ask yourself if that one card slot is worth it. One Horn's Tome is hard to hard to gauge because it is literally like there is no middle ground. There's not like so Wildwood Tome is okay and sometimes good. One Horn's Tome is either unplayable, worthless, or game winning. Yeah. And there's no I, in between. I, I I think that just the the window for it being game winning is very small. Yeah, for sure. But like when it is, it's like if I didn't take this we were done yeah. for no for for sure. But like I yeah I think Wildwood Tome on average is going to be better, but when One Horn's Tome has its highs, it goes insane. Mm -hmm. uh, up next, ugh. two energy <laughs> spell consume restore a friendly unit to full health, then swap attack and health. Adaptive mutation. Consume. I don't know if I said consume. I litter. I have tried. I cannot conceptualize a world where I take this card. I I had it work okay-ish one time. I didn't win the run still, but it was like a cool thing. Okay, I please. Gave, I gave, I gave, uh, what's her name? Three times three lady. Oh. I gave her a large stone. Okay. And then I played adaptive on her to switch him around because her HP was much higher than her attack was. Wow, okay. But that's not a, that's not a good strategy still. No. I, 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 already, I admit right up front that that's not like a good plan. Right. But it's cool. The only time I've ever even thought about picking, I've, t I've taken adaptive mutation once and let me tell you, it wasn't good, but my actual thought process was, okay, well my consumer of crowns that I'm playing has 100 attack and 40 health and he keeps dying, but my second consumer of crowns has 100 attack times 2 and 40 health, so if I switch the front one so he has 40 attack and 100 health, he'll tank for the second consumer of crowns. Okay. That one was fucked. <laughs> it didn't win. And it sucked. Uh, fortunate. I don't think adaptive mutation is good. Half the units that you would want to play this on, it just straight up kills them. I honestly think that what you're supposed to do with this is like you're supposed to like turn your Awoken Hollow into a 75 attack monstrosity that sits behind your sentient. But that sucks. That's, yeah, that's not a good plan that either. That sucks. That sucks. Like, why would you do that? Under what circumstance? I don't understand. Cool. If like there's a card like this where it switched it, but it had a built in holdover mechanic, so you could like switch it back and forth throughout the game. Like, yeah, that. The, the, the battle. So I think that that's. That's the other now big he's thing. Guessing, now he's going back to uh, to being a tank. Yeah, that's the other big thing, right? This adaptive mutation, you only get to do it once, so like you're committing. You swap that boy to 75 attack, 15 health, and that's it. He's he's like that's it. He's done. You're not swapping him back. He's 15 health for the rest of the time. It's just weird. I will say an important thing about this card is that it's in my brew to how to make an Ember Forge win the game for you. Okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know Ember Forge. Yeah, of course. It's funny if you if you like at like low covenant want Ember Forge to kill the boss for you, you're gonna have to use adaptive mutation somehow. I mean, I think the better choice, <laughs> the, the better choice would just be to like get a spike and spike him a mice a morsel miner and just give him like plus nah, fifty plus boring. fifty. That's boring. All right, fine. <laughs> I don't think adaptive mutation is good. Up next, two energy, spell, apply regen two and spikes two, add a copy of this card to your discard pile. Spreading spores. It's a good card. It's it's pretty weird, but it is good, right? It's, it's yeah. low impact for the cost. Like, it's not a good value, but the, the value comes in on, on two fronts. When you upgrade it, you upgrade all of the copies it makes. Mm -hmm. so and you so... can make it cheaper to play. You then get more copies of it, those copies are cheaper to play, you keep playing more, yada yada yada. This is one of the few spells in the game where when I, I look at it, I go, I wish this, I, I hope I get the third spell slot upgrade. Mm -hmm. Because I think this one really, really wants, I mean, you can pass with just one, but I think you want two 
cost reductions and double yeah. stack on this. Or or one cost and then two, like, you know, again, yeah. Magical Christmas Land, but if you get two double stacks, oh boy. I don't think you're allowed to have two double stacks on a card. Does it stop you? I, I'm pretty sure it stops you. I've never had that come up. I think I've tried it once or twice. It is rude, but yeah, I mean, Spreading Force is really good. Mega Crit, what's wrong with you? You can't do two times yeah, two? Yeah, what the hell, Mega Crit? I mean, I think, um, I think the real problem is you'd end up being like one energy, a hundred armor. That'd be pretty strong. It'd be, it'd be cool. So, something, you know, I want to point it out. Uh, never mind. I, what I was about to say is I think Awoken's Rail Spike is one of is the only card in the game that you can't upgrade at all, but I was wrong, you can remove Consume from it. Mm -hmm. But that is a downgrade, because then you have Awoken's Rail Spike oh, in your deck. No. Yeah, and with, with, oh, that's such a bad, Ugh. that's such a bad. You play that at one energy and it literally just <laughs> takes, no, it does nothing. I'm paying one energy for nothing. Yeah, one energy do literally nothing. One energy for the privilege of having a Wilkins Rail Spike in your deck. Imagine paying, playing it for zero and it's like, okay, I'm taking a card away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it makes one of the cards in your deck cost two more. Alright, anything else you want to say about Spreading Spores? Card's really good, like it's a strong yeah, win put, condition. Put it on your tank. Yeah, like you just, you just spam this on whichever hollow you have and it just wins you the game. Mm -hmm. It's good. Up next. Two energy, five attack, 30 health, three space, revenge, gain one energy, wilting, sapwood. I'll say I it. Like, I don't like him. I'll, I'll say it. I've had this guy carry my run. Uh, like the big combo that you take with wilting sapwood is you play this. I, the, 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 rail spike. Yeah, <laughs> Woken's rail spike. You uh, So step one, you need to... Uh, Hold over a torch, and then you need to like you need a way to draw that torch, and then you just need to keep torching your own sapwood. But you also need the torch to be free. No, okay. Yeah, like like <laughs> no. So I had this wilting sapwood in a run where I was stacking a bunch of those ember drain cards onto penumbra, and wilting sapwood was just like giving me, letting me still play cards despite penumbra having four ember drain. How how does how does ember drain interact with revenge energy gain? Does it no. happen after you lose the energy from Ember Drain? Yeah, because Ember Drain happens at the start of your turn, but if Wilting Sapwood takes, like, seven damage, you're still getting, you know... Like, if, if you get hit seven times or, like, four times with it, it's still... You're starting the round with seven energy. Then you lose four, and it's like you get a regular Okay, so turn. you're saying it was getting you more energy than you were losing from the Ember Drain. Yeah, not exactly. Not like some weird interaction where it avoided the Ember Drain drain. No, it does not. However... Uh, the other thing to point out... I, I when I When I took a run with this card, I took it at the very beginning of the run. Like, I took it as my Daedalus reward because I needed a tank. I didn't get offered any of the Awoken Boys, and I just used this as my tank. And at 30 health, like, it's fine. You throw it some healing, you throw it some uh, help, and, like, you get to play... Because the big thing is, you get to play all of your cards from your hand with Wilting Sapwood. You're leaving most most combat rounds with at least 5 energy, sometimes 6 or 7. You know, that that's a good point. And, and I think I undervalue it for that, but, like... I just, it, he does a bad job of tanking still. He does a bad job. You, but the, you need a lot of healing cards to make him not die. Yeah, so at 30 health, you need to have a better plan by the time you're on 4-7, but Wilting Sapwood, as long as you can, like, pick off the back line some way, like, make sure that he's not tanking, like, 9 times 2, or 9 health, nine attack, 2 health, boys, he'll live for a while. He does fine. I guess, I guess also, like, maybe the best, like, like having Unleash the Wildwood Holdover is pretty cool, because mm -hmm. then it's just, like, you know, you, you heal him, and then play all your other cards because you have enough energy to play yeah. all the other cards. And the other thing about Wilting Sapwood is I just gave him plus 50 health, right? I gave him plus 25 twice and all of a sudden he's a 580. That's kind of juicy. He does still cost two energy though. Yeah, but like you get it, that it, energy it can, cause, it can cause your unit rollout in the beginning to be kind of slow. It depends on the draw, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you typically get it back. I Combo Wilting Sapwood with the Revenge Draw 1 version of the Sentient and you have like... 10 cards that you can play every turn, and it's pretty good. I think I Wilting Sapwood's fine. It's like a in, a in dire situations, you can take it, and it's fine. That's my official take. Anything you'd like to say? Have you not taken it very much? I have not taken it very much. Yeah. It, it, I always find that I have a tank instead mm -hmm. when I see him. Maybe, maybe like you one day, I will be offered him when I do not have a good tank, and I yeah. will see how good he is. 
Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I think that Wilting Sapwood is my deranged brute right here. Okay, you know, that's fair. Decent, like, decent rare unit that you haven't seen very much that I've had one or two runs where it really held the run together for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. The final card of the set, if you're ready to finish this out. Yes. Three energy, spell, enhance a unit with plus ten health, and apply spikes for cycle of life. Sharpen Not eat. No, sharpen eat your fucking heart out, though. Yeah, that's true. I actually think cycle of life is good. I don't think it's that good. I'll I say think it's better than sharpen. Yeah. So here's the here's the big thing to consider with cycle of life, right? If you're putting this on your tank, plus ten max HP is kind of whatever, and spikes four is also kind of whatever. However. Combo this with Razor Sharp Edge on your Animus of Will, all of a sudden you're popping out plus 10 max HP. It's pretty good. I think that this is a card that really does need that minus one cost on it. Yeah. But you can make this, like, I've, I've made this work in a few runs. I've actually willingly picked this a few times. I think that this is a card that I would take if I was building around Animus of Will, because being able to throw plus 10 max HP down is really important. Uh, I honestly think, I'm gonna say it, I think the best target to put Cycle of Life on is Tethys. I can see that as well. Basically, this is, I, I think that this is a card that you take as like insurance because if you go against Sower of Sorrows on the fifth floor and you have no way to stop your backline from dying, like you don't have a way to stop him, you're just gonna lose. And Cycle of Life can be that way. Yeah, I, I I agree that like the 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 four spikes is like this card is useless on a tank. The stats yeah. are too low on a tank. He doesn't like no tanks want it. And you have to defend the backline unit. And there's better it's, ways it's, to apply the spikes. Yeah, and the, I, I in, in my opinion, there's better ways to you know apply ten HP. Not maybe not in Awoken. Like you know, uh, Hellhorns have the armor. Like you know, if you're playing like if you're playing Hellhorn away Awoken. This mm -hmm. card's kind of useless because you can just you know fortify your backline guy instead. Yeah, for sure. But like, it's still it's not bad to have both, right? It's not bad to have fortify yeah, and cycle yeah, yeah. of life. They're they're not mutually exclusive, but I'm I'm with you. I think the cycle of life is fine. I think that this is this isn't a card that you take. Uh, how do I how do I put this? This isn't really a card that you want to take because you think it's going to win you the game. This is a card that you take so you don't lose the game. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. This I isn't agree. a card that's going to be like, oh my god, I beat Seraph because Cycle of Life gave my boy 10 more health. This is a card that was like, oh my god, I didn't die to Sower of Sorrow because I had plus 10 health on my uh, fucking oh, Animus. I just wish it wasn't a rare. It like, yeah, hey, card art, card art is so cool. The effect is just boring. Yeah, I, I, I understand, right? It's a pretty strong effect. And like we said, adding max HP is a very premium, premium thing to put on cards. So putting it at a rare, I, I understand. Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, goodbye. Cut no. the video. <laughs> Cut the video. Cut the video. <laughs> uh, Want to do uh, overall thoughts on the Awoken's rares before we close it out? Uh, they got some, you know, some variants here. They got some, some big some, and some big hits. Some fucking. Oh my god, they have. First of all, they have the worst rail spike in the game for sure, in my opinion. No, uh, no. Uh, I think there's an argument for the. Uh, melting Remnants Rail Spike. Yeah, that one's pretty bad as well. But like, re like really bad Rail Spike. I think that one of the worst rare units in the game in Vine Mother is in this set. Mm -hmm. And I think Adaptive Mutation is just a card that confuses me. Like, I don't understand when I'm ever going to take this. But Unleash the Wildwood, best healing card in the game. Channel Song is situationally good. Spreading Spores is a win condition on its own. And Cycle of Life can save your run. And, you know, sometimes Wildwood Tome is good. Yeah. We have okay rares. I rating rating like how I feel about the rares, right? Because I want to go back and look at Hellhorn real quick for a second. Because yeah. there is that event that lets you pick a get a rare draft. Do you take Hellhorn or do you take Awoken when you like just just for now? Which one well, would you prefer? In, in this in this theory, right? Where in this in this situation, I'm playing Hellhorn Awoken, right? No, no, no. You're playing like something else. You're playing because you won't get oh, the oh, rare draft. Because the, the event, the event, yeah, the event doesn't give you who you have. Uh, guilds to choose from, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it gives um, you it gives you the three you don't have. So who would you prefer at this point? I'd probably say Awoken. There's so many cards with Hellhorn, like like for example, Consumer of Crowns. Uh -huh. like, that shows up. It's like this is worthless. Uh huh. Right? I I think I might go Hellhorn. There's there there are cards though with with uh. Awoken in their rares that are good no matter what you're doing, right? Like yeah, channel song uh, is always good. Wood, like channel song is always good. 
threading spores. Like charge handler bad. I'll say that yeah. one, you know. Charge handler sucks, vine mother sucks, circle of life isn't bad. It's like what you gotta figure out how many of these cards are you okay with taking? It's like Unleash the Wildwood pretty good, Channel Song pretty good, Wildwood Tome pretty good, Spreading Spores pretty good, Cycle of Life. So it's like five, it's about half. I would say I'd be okay with. I'll be honest, I'm looking at I'm looking at uh Hellhorn right now. There's maybe only two that I'm pretty sure I'm okay with no matter what. Alloy of the Ancients. And Dark Deal, I Dark think. Dark Deal. I think Spike of the Hellhorn is fine pretty much always. But yeah, you're right. There's only three. Really. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but like, I feel like I feel like there's way more hits in Awoken. Yeah, you're right. As I look at it, right? Because I, I feel like all of the Hellhorn rares are like capstone cards. You built your deck around getting this card. Last Stand, yeah, Reinforce, just... Impolate, Consumer of Crowns. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Awoken is more like utility stuff that helps you a lot. Can you imagine the draft option where you get like a card? Or is that is that event just pick? You get a card, or is it a draft from a, you, a rare? You draft a rare from the from the clan. Can you imagine getting Impolite, Consumer of Crowns, and One Horns Tome when you're playing outside of Hellhorn? <laughs> Can you imagine getting, like, I honestly, imagine getting Impolite, fucking Transcendent, and Consumer of Crowns. <laughs> they, they just are like, by the way, you're playing Imps this run, and then I just quit the run. Mm -hmm. Ugh. But yeah, I think that's the Awoken on the books, right? Any, any closing thoughts? I think Awoken's a really good faction overall yeah but you know after doing this card review i'm like wait a minute are they a really good faction because wow they have a lot of shit cards yeah they got they got they got a lot of clunkers but like they got a lot of really good cards as well to make up yeah. for it and they have the i think highest density of tanks in the game yeah for sure you i mean you start also, with a tank well, like we mentioned a lot of times they let units walk by them so your other clan needs to pick up on the on the slack when it comes to dps on units yeah. they can kill bosses they can tank for your dps against units but they cannot kill units very quickly. So you need something else to kill the things from getting to your pyre. Yeah, I think so. Or I guess you need a lot of rooted to force the enemies to stay in route and the rune with you. I don't know. But, but it's hard. It's hard to get that much. Like you know, yeah. there's, not many, there's not many, that many root effects. I'm kind of surprised that there's not a one energy card that just says root the entire room. You, you, you'd know that if that existed, you'd lose so many runs to like, oh, I rooted these enemies, and then another wave, and they double stacked and killed my champion. Oh yeah, I know, I would lose like every run yeah. to that. I, I would probably lose like three runs in a row to that, and then I would just never take rooting again. But yeah, I guess that'll do it. Uh, Cranberry, would you like to do the outro to this video, maybe? No, I'm good. <laughs> Alright, well, at least <laughs> say goodbye. Nah. Nah? Alright, I mean, I, I left I'm it open. Saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying goodbye at the start of videos now. Alright, alright, at the start of next video, you'll say goodbye. I'll say, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, leave me a like. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more. We'll be putting these out every day until we're done with them, hopefully. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.